Hey, my friends, it's your old pal Jordan the Lion and your old pal Jaw. How are you all doing today? I hope you said great. I'm doing great. We're making our way through Wisconsin today on our way to Plainfield. Yeah, if that town sounds familiar, it's a small little town. Less than a thousand people have lived there pretty much its entire existence. And yet it's very famous for one person. A person they call sometimes the butcher of Plainfield. This man was Ed Gein. Ed Gein is notorious in many ways. His life has been depicted in various ways in both Psycho and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And what he did in 1957, or what was found in 1957, shocked the entire world. I'm gonna tell you about his story today. Let's make our way over to the Plainfield Cemetery. Days with Jordan the Lion begins right now. And here we are at Ship Rock. Yeah, it's kind of amazing. Right out in the middle of nowhere, you just see all these rock formations that really are out of place in the area, I feel like, and they call it Ship Rock. You know, it's crazy, or maybe I'm crazy. If you look at this one on the far left, it almost looks like a person leaning up against something because you can almost see lips and stuff in there, can't you? A face. Jaw, close your ears during this vlog. I don't want you to hear any of this bad stuff. Cemetery that we're going to is not only Ed Gein's final resting place, but it's where he perpetuated many of his crimes. Here at the Plainfield Cemetery, in an unmarked grave with the rest of his family, is the final resting place of Ed Gein. Such a nice, quiet place. It's hard to believe the things that he would do here. You know, I try and normally make my vlogs very, like, kind of uplifting, or if there's a negative story to try and find a silver lining in it, but this is one that is just kind of like a warning sign of just, you, you just never know what can happen, who can do it, and um, how quickly you can lose someone. So if you want to come out here yourself, you're going to want to find two large, well, a pile of trees together. It's kind of like really just two trees and the name Drake on the headstone. And then you're gonna follow just past that. This is, uh, sad that we're coming out here for someone so heinous, but here is the Gein family plot. This right here where somewhere has left a liquor bottle was Ed Gein's. This is his brother Henry, which he died of very peculiar circumstances. His mother Augusta, who's probably responsible for Ed's behavior. Then his father, George. The family moved to this area when it seems like Ed was about nine years old, and it was because his mother, Augusta, wanted the boys to not be corrupted by a big city. She was very religious, and she wanted them in a very small town. Plainfield is definitely that. Normally between 500 and 700 citizens, I believe. And uh, so they moved here and she was extremely domineering. She did not let the boys socialize with really anyone. They didn't really have any friends. It was said that if they had any, if they made any friends and brought them around, Augusta found something she didn't like about the kid and told them they weren't allowed to be around him anymore. Eventually the boys would have to quit school and work on the family farm. She was very domineering, but Ed, it appears, fell into rested development when he left school. He just kind of idolized her. There was something about her that he, he just, she could do or say no wrong. And she ran this family 
with an iron fist everything that she said would go and so that's the way it went and both boys ended up never leaving the home they all lived on the farm together um it was in 1940 when george their father he was a very bad drunk and used to beat the boys he eventually died and when he died in a weird way ed kind of he kind of liked it because that was one less person to divide his mother's attention and then in 1944 henry mysteriously died ed and henry were out working on the farm and there was a brush fire and ed claimed that he lost henry couldn't find him in the fire so he went to get help and when he came back with the help he directed the help right over to where henry was and henry had bruising so they didn't know really what had happened but the official cause of death that they came up with was that he had suffered a heart attack and that he had fallen down and got that bruising from suffering the heart attack but years later when it was found out what all ed would end up perpetuating in his life they kind of wondered if it wasn't ed wanting to get rid of henry because henry had actually for the last couple of years since george was gone he had been criticizing the mother augusta telling ed you know sh maybe she's not the greatest mother maybe she she doesn't know everything and ed just couldn't fathom that that could be the case so there was some speculation later on that ed had actually killed off henry because then ed got to be with augusta by himself and she had suffered a stroke and he took care of her day and night it was said that he used to get into bed with her and took care of her and then eventually after 19 months of him having his wish of just him and mother she ended up dying and that's when everything seems to have went really really crazy because from 1945 until 1957 what we would eventually find out in 1957 is that during the first day of hunting season in november i think it was actually november 16 1957 ed Gein knew that all of the men in town would be out hunting and he went to the local hardware store there was a woman there named Bernice that ran the store and Ed apparently had been sweet on her. He, you know, in town he was known, everybody knew him. He would do odd jobs, like a handyman for people and people knew him that way. He was just kind of thought of as a nice kind of simpleton. Um, he loved to read, but he just didn't really, you know, he had no social skills whatsoever. That being said, he would have dinner with his neighbors and, you know, did socialize like that. But people all just knew that that he was kind of weird. And so once his mother was gone, um, you know, he was missing a mother figure. And so that day that hunting season had started, Ed went to the hardware store knowing that Bernice would be there alone. And he purchased some antifreeze and she wrote him a receipt. And then he left the store and then came back in and asked to see a rifle that was on display in the window. And when she turned around to get it, he shot her. And then he carried her body out to his truck and took her back to his home. And so when her son came back from hunting and went to the store, saw that she wasn't there, saw the blood, he immediately contacted the police and suspected Ed because he knew that Ed had been to the store kind of bothering his mother, asking her out a lot in the weeks leading up to this. So the police ended up looking for Ed, found him having dinner at a neighbor's house, and then searched his home, the farmhouse that he had inherited from his family's all passing. They were looking for evidence or to find Bernice 
and unfortunately what they found see his house didn't have any kind of electricity they went in with flashlights and as they looked around they found and I will put a time signature right here if you don't want to hear the details of the house um, because they may be upsetting go to this time signature so when they entered the house they thought they saw um, what was um, a deer that had been killed and just you know disemboweled and everything but turned out that it wasn't uh, it was a female and then they noticed um, that there were gloves made of human skin there were lampshades all of these things in his house were made out of body parts and that he had books on like medical books he had books on Elsa Koch who was uh, one of the people who ran the the Nazi human experiments and um, and they would find all kinds of body parts and things like that and including a head to a woman that had been missing for the last couple of years a woman named Mary Hogan that ran a beer joint um, they brought Ed in for questioning. He didn't talk for the first 24 hours. Then he asked for a piece of apple pie with cheese on it. Like I said, he had arrested development, definitely. He had the mind of what he would claim. I mean, he would end up using um, innocent by reason of insanity as his plea and everything, but he eventually told them, you know, everything that he had done and uh, they thought that he had killed these women, and in fact, uh, only the two that they knew about, they, they had found Barry Hogan and Bernice, those were the only two that he admitted to. The rest he claimed he had gotten from this cemetery. See, after Ed's mother died, he would come here and visit her all the time. Um, one of the guys who used to mow the lawn out here said he used to see him out here said in fact when he heard that ed was arrested he almost couldn't believe it because he said he just wasn't that guy you just didn't think he was that guy but ed was basically following the newspaper and finding out people that had recently died women that had recently died and then after they were buried he was coming out here and digging them back up and taking either them or parts of them that he needed and he was making art in his house things to display masks and like i mentioned all this various other stuff chairs and yeah it was just uh, bowls the bowls that he was eating out of were made from human remains and sadly one of the people that he had claimed to have done this to because once he said that the police they of course were like they almost couldn't believe it so they had to come out here and they had to investigate some of those graves and this one right behind Eleanor Adams the Gein family are right here Eleanor Adams is one that he did this to to my knowledge her remains have never been found So he ended up claiming that he was insane and that the trees were talking to him and the house was talking to him and everything. And he ended up indeed getting sentenced to a home for the criminally insane for the rest of his life. He lived to be 77. People that went and tried to interview him said he was completely incoherent by those times. And they never really got an accurate count because he he confessed to grave robbing nine graves, uh, never taking any items of any you know like no monetary value. It was all people, parts, things like that. It's horrifying to even talk about. And the reason that he doesn't have a headstone isn't because they don't want people to come out here or anything like that. Is because. The headstone had been stolen and then retrieved, stolen and retrieved. And then it was out here till 2000 and someone was, the headstone was all kind of chipped away and everything. I'll show you a photo when it was here and what it looked like. But it was all chipped away and there was someone on eBay that was actually 
selling pieces of it. And so the county decided to take the headstone away and they put it in a museum. And the museum is not far away. The problem is today is Thursday and the museum is only open from 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. on Wednesdays. <laughs> so we missed it. So I'll just have to show you photos. But yeah, that's, uh, that's the Ed Gein story now. I want to go out and show you where the house and the farm was, and I want to tell you what all happened there um, after Ed, after they found out what Ed had done. Because once his mother died, basically what he ended up doing was he kind of boarded off thing, rooms that were important to her and kept them exactly the way she had them. And then all the other rooms, he just basically hoarded. He just put garbage and trash and just nonsense. And then all the things he created were all around the house on the walls and hanging from the rafters and all that kind of stuff. So it was quite a place when they went in there to investigate it and they were actually gonna sell the place. I truly feel bad for the family here that has to know what Ed Gein did to their mother's remains that's completely horrifying and in no way i hope is this uh, vlog being taken to glorify this is completely keep your eyes open to the people around you ask questions if something looks weird it probably is kind of situations that's a warning i think that's what all horror movies are and and when i started this vlog i mentioned that texas chainsaw massacre and psycho both had taken uh parts from his story even psycho crediting him at the end of the movie or at the end of the book even but that should tell you something when it takes several horror movies to include everything that this guy did and perpetuated on such a small town and one thing i could never understand was i was kind of like why did he never come and take his own mother's body back? Doesn't that seem like the most obvious thing? And uh, because all the people that he desecrated their graves, they were all people that had something that kind of reminded them of her. Well, apparently um, the reason was, was because the part of the cemetery where they are buried at is a, a form of sandy ground. And because of that, um, the graves can sink so they encased them in concrete so hers had been encased in concrete and there was no way for him to uh, to be able to get to it and I also always kind of wondered like how did he do this with no one ever asking questions you know even if you do it at nighttime someone would have to say uh, why is this grave you know freshly dug up well apparently like I said earlier it was because he would watch the papers for obituaries and he would wait till it was a uh, freshly buried and then he would come out shortly thereafter while the ground was was still soft and everything so the ed really had no conscience or ever any really feeling of remorse this is the same road he very likely would have traveled after all those visits out there, it just makes my skin crawl. And the truck that he used after the trial and everything, somebody bought it and actually took it on the fair circuit and charged 25 cents for people to see the car. Even the air just smells weird out here. Just kind of an off-putting smell. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. So this overgrown farm with the gate is the old Gein farm it was a massive property if i'm not mistaken online i think it said it was like 120 or 150 acres it was out here on second street the house would have been out in there that hovel no electricity just oh can you imagine so after all of this happened and they did all the investigations of course people came out and they were curious like sightseers just like kind of what we're doing they were curious and um they came out here and were looking in the windows and looking at everything in the house 
So people kind of knew this was going to turn into a, you know, basically a tourist attraction. So they were going to, they were cleaning out the garbage that he had because he used to accumulate garbage. I said he was a hoarder. Not only his own garbage, he would just accumulate garbage everywhere and bring it back to the house apparently. So they were cleaning all that out and they had it out in the field, out kind of off to the side of the house and were burning it, doing a controlled burn. I think this was like two days before they were gonna auction the house. And there was a guy that had already said he planned on buying the house and was gonna open it to the public as a museum and call it the real house of horrors. So somehow, mysteriously, that controlled burn ended up burning up the house and everything in it. Yep. They never really figured out what happened, but it was said that highly possible that it you know, could have been arson because the people in this area just didn't want that kind of attention any more there any ha than what they already had. So this stayed in a family for a long, long time. And then when it was passed down, one of the inheritors decided he wanted to sell the property. He knew there would be interest in it. So he wanted to sell it and posted it on eBay as Ed Gein's farm and it got pulled. They took the auction down because eBay does not allow any kind of profiting off of serial killers. So that was taken down and apparently it was eventually later sold to someone who knows exactly what the property is. And even though there's a barricade here for no trespassing, the owner has been nice enough for documentaries that have come through that wanted to get onto the property. It's been nice enough to let them on the property. So I don't want to go on it personally because I'm not convinced that they found everything that there was to find out here. And that's just bad mojo. And I just kind of would rather leave it undisturbed. But this was where Ed Gein's farm was. That true house of horror, that true Texas Chainsaw Massacre type house. I know this was horribly disturbing, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, you know, take it for what it is. And like I said, not glorifying this at all. I think it's a horrible thing. I think he was a horrible, evil person. And um, I think sadly, he just, he never really had to ever pay for what he, what he did. He... He ended up living in an institution, but uh, never had any kind of real serious punishment, it doesn't sound like. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a great night, and goodbye. Mm -hmm.